Good morning, guys. So hopefully your morning's going good so far. I am out by myself today. We are gonna do one aeration so far. I felt a raindrop. Um, it's supposed to rain for the next three days starting like now on the next three days, but we're gonna try to get this one done. I'm gonna aerate, seed, and fertilize this one. We are not gonna put the tenacity down on this one because there's rain coming and we don't want um, that to get washed away. So we'll come back on, it stinks to have to come back, but um, we'll come back on Thursday morning and start um, spraying any ones that I do today. I might go try to mow another one and mow another two and put down um, the seed for them too. But I think I, I gotta see if I have enough seed um i gotta go get more but um we're gonna go ahead and get out and get this done and i'll take you on a ride with the aerator and set up the camera so you guys can see how we aerate what patterns we do okay so let's get out there and get this done um and try to get over there and get another one done i don't chase said the rain's coming in two hours so we'll see let's go ahead and go so here's the first one we're doing you can see some of the weeds that i sprayed started dying um when we come back and spray the tenacity, it will get the rest of these weeds that are in this lawn. So let me go ahead and start aerating this one before it starts raining.
So there you go, I'm halfway done. I just gotta do the side over there and the rest. And this is what the yard should look like when it's properly cored. Um, anywhere from this long of cores to even this, depending on how big of cores you can get out. So after I'm done, I'll let you guys know how long it took me to do this and what we charge to aerate and how much you should pay to aerate. Okay, okay guys, so I'm done this one. Um, I gotta see how many square feet it is. I think it's 7,000 square feet. I'll measure it out or I'll look at my notes again and let you guys know. But to just to, for people who wanna know like prices, how much uh, it should cost or how much you should pay or how much you should charge. This one took me 35 minutes and we charge 120 to do this one. So just for the aeration. So let's see how big. So it's all this. All the way around here. And yeah, if I recall, it's 7,000, 7, 8,000 square foot. So just so you know how big it is. So just the air rate is 120 on this one. So you guys have to be the judge on what you would charge, but that's what we charge. And it took 35, 30. So the only thing we did not finish on that one was the spray because it's starting to rain and you can't spray in the rain, it's useless. You're wasting chemicals and harming the environment it all just washes off. Um, so that one took me exactly to aerate seed. Make sure I'm not running anything over. So to aerate seed, fertilize that one, not spray, 410. So if you guys are wondering price. Now my seed is um, about 160 a bag. So you guys have to figure in that. To seed that one, I think we charged 215 and I used, what was it? 7,000 square foot. So at five, six pounds, so four, 42 pounds of seed. So 40, 42 pounds of seed there. So you guys see the, the, the breakdown. So, and aerating is just my time and the cost of the machine. So, but I let you know what that price was. And fertilizing is cost of fertilizer and an application fee. So, but okay, let's go see this radar and see if I can get the, uh, at least one more mode and done. Um, at least the seed, I don't have any more fertilizer with me, but if I can get the seed down on these two before it rains and then just come back with the fertilizer when I go get it, so. So I don't have a lot of time before the rain comes. So I'm gonna start with this one mowing and then I'm gonna aerate and seed this one. I don't have fertilizer for the rest of this one. Um, and then I do have to do the one across the street, but I'm not sure if, if I have time. If the rain comes before then, then I'll do it another day. But let's get this one done.
it's not a nice out right now, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and start mowing this one until I get a steady. Well guys, this turned into a big giant mess. I got these two done, now I gotta clean this crap up. It started ringing. Look at that. Look at this mess, man. <sighs> at least I got three almost done. are done for the day so i got three of them aerated three of them seeded and one fertilized we'll do write them down to come out first thing to fertilize and spray but i am done we'll see what we can get into at home guys 
So I finished doing all the aerations. I only did three, but at least it's three done. Yeah. Um, I got to go back and spray them, of course. So they're priority Thursday. I want to finish them off in the morning while you're doing schooling. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go spray all the ones I aerated today and put the fertilizer down on the ones I didn't put fertilizer down on. So they're completely done all together. Right. So Rachel didn't come with me to work, though. I went out and did it on my own. But that's all right. It was ones I could do. And you guys got to see me aerating. I know. Well, I was trying to get Chase done, like, early so that I could go out with him. But then by the time he was already out, he saw the rain coming. And he was just like, let me just get yeah. done what I can get done. Um, so that was, we were, I'm really thankful for that. So... I told Carl again today that I am extremely thankful that um, we're in a position that we can keep the kids home and that he is willing to work a little harder. Um, well, you're working harder, too, teaching them. You weren't a teacher before all this. Now you're yeah. a teacher. Yeah. And she's doing really good at being the teacher. So <laughs> she's She um, added, remember we found the butterflies? Yeah. Um, the monarchs? Yeah. Well, we're glad that she. you guys took off a lot of them, right? You took yeah. like nine or ten, thankfully, because there's only one left I can find out there. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, like... You figure nature is nature. So I'm sure that if a big caterpillar is out out like that, like just in the open, there's so many birds in our garden. Um, I would assume that they wouldn't live. So I don't know. I'm glad we had the butterfly net because then we took the opportunity to take them. I was a little nervous that we didn't have enough food for them. Um, but they started crystal, like turning into chrysalis. Yeah, I'll show you guys when we're done this. I'll yeah. take you up on the porch and we'll end the video with a little bit of garden and showing you the butterflies. Yeah, so I did grab some milkweed, um, but that was for the couple that were still kind of eating. And they're going to be in chrysalis now. We did research. So we, you know, took this opportunity to go ahead and start doing more research on monarchs. And then I had the kids write in their journals about monarchs um so i was just really thankful for this free <laughs> lesson plan um and you know they they actually did research that they should stay i think in the chrysalis for about a week i think is what we learned and if i'm if i'm good i'm gonna try to time lapse them coming out of the chrysalis oh man that would be really i'm gonna hope cool. to be able to get it i mean if one of them starts i mm. should be able to there's so many of them i think there's five or six hanging now or maybe even seven if one starts i should be able to get it on time lapse them coming out yeah so um i have to do more research or we the kids and i have to do more research now like what should we feed them when they come out? So this generation is the generation that actually has to travel to their hibernating grounds. In Mexico. Yeah, this is considered, Mexico. you know, we are considered their breeding grounds, basically. And their hibernating grounds is in Mexico or if you're further west. In California. Yeah, I think they go to California. Um, so they hibernate and they hibernate for like a full nine months we were researching because normally summer generations only live like max like six weeks and this gener generation lives nine months because their whole purpose is then to migrate back up to the breeding grounds and then start the life cycle all over again. And um, guess what we're going to do? We're going to plant a lot yeah. more of that milkweed next year. So the <laughs> kids are even already on board. Like, even our 13-year-old was like, we have to plant an entire field <laughs> of milkweed. Definitely, we, um, when we get our farm, we're going to have a monarch sanctuary there. Yeah. We're going to plant all kinds of... Uh, of yeah, uh, one of my favorite places... Um, from it when i was a kid was butterfly world in florida in florida yeah. yeah i don't know if you guys i think i've been there yeah i did make us go i made us take the kids one time oh yeah that's right yeah it was so cool. that's why yeah i loved it because they also have like a little parrot area too where you can go in oh and, with the birds right yeah uh-huh so um so if you guys are near that area butterfly world it's a really great experience and it's all outside so yeah, so that's something fun and to do. safe so yeah but, um, so yeah, we really appreciate you guys watching and we love sharing our journey with you. So. And hopefully you guys will see the time lapse of the butterflies. So we're going to do an ending right here, but the video isn't over for 
people want to see bonus i'll take you and show you there's yeah. so much stuff going on in the tomatoes. garden there's we're gonna pick a whole bunch of tomatoes so you guys at the towards the end of this video we'll see how many we get um there's a lot of tomatoes we gotta pick mm -hmm. and we're gonna have fun this week processing tomato maybe tomorrow in the rain and stuff to yeah. try to get a bun bunch of things going so we don't waste that and all the rotten ones that are out there go to the chickens and then we'll show you i'll show you where the other ones go and update you on the worm buckets up there but um so i think that we're actually going to be able to get peppers this time too. oh yeah banana peppers too. yeah so if we are going to pickle them i would really like to get some green tomatoes too because i know that they're not all going to turn um oh okay and I would like to do some uh, pickle green tomatoes. Okay, we can try that. I haven't had them since I was like a kid, so I really want to make them. So guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when we upload videos. And don't forget to be happy. Or at least try. Just have a, good, have a night. good night. So let's go check out these crystals. Okay, guys, remember I told you I'd show you the monarchs? Look, there's one here. There's one there. So we have a whole bunch of them hanging. That one's still alive, making itself a little catalyst, I guess it's called. And then there's one down here, and there's another one that's smaller in there. We have to go pick tomatoes. I ended up cutting all this back, all this coleus you see back. Um, it was just unruly, so we'll see what it does now. And I gave it worm castings. And these are the fuchsias I cut back earlier, like a couple weeks ago. And you see all the new growth growing on them. You hear Mellow, he's down there barking. All the new growth growing on them, even some new buds, some new flowers. So we'll keep an eye on them. We shouldn't get another frost for another 30 days, I would imagine. So all this should bloom again really nicely. And I might even bring some of these in the house and put them under light. But we'll see. I don't know. I'm going to get ready to go pick tomatoes, guys. So we're going to do one round of tomato picking right now real quick. But we'll see how all this grows back. Hopefully it grows back nicely. I mean, it is the, almost the end of the season and it all looks good. Oh, and here's where I'm keeping all of my worm buckets up here. And all the worms so far, I need to feed these again. So when I feed these again, I'll show you guys. Um, but this is one, two, three, four, five buckets. Well, four buckets have 225 worms. And this bucket had about 150, 130, 100, 125, 150, I'm not sure. And this was just all the extra worm poop. And I put a little bit of food on the top to see if I can attract any worms that were left in there and see what this does. I mean, if I get them to multiply in here, that would be good. I might check that out in a minute, but I gotta go get a first round of tomatoes for Rachel. Okay guys, so I got my nifty little basket. We're gonna load this thing up. Hopefully my basket doesn't break. Start with getting all of the Rama tomatoes that we have. Ramas, we're only going for Ramas right now, guys. Look at this garden. Still, things out of control. The mosquitoes are out of control in here too. But um, let's go over here and find any Rama tomatoes. We'll start all the way down here. Look, a lot of these are gonna go to the chickens. Yeah, a lot of them will, but it is what it is. Okay, so this is a Rama tomato. Uh, I should have gone and got the, I had scissors. So let's see how many of these, I uh, see that one's bad. Okay, I'm gonna go get scissors real quick and then I'm gonna cut off all the Rama tomatoes I can get off of here that are good still. Um, and then we'll figure how many we got. Cause you have all these though, those aren't llamas. Uh, this, see how quick blight sets in? We'll go see, these are, these are not llamas. These are worm food. So everything gets used. We can make more worm buckets, but look, all these, I told Rachel she has a couple, probably 200 llama tomatoes. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pick all these and then I'll show you what we've got. Wow, look at this thing guys. Look at this thing. Those are the loofah. Oh, I know, I'm sorry. You guys might be disappointed. I haven't got much in the garden. Just, you know, we get so busy. One day I won't be mowing as much and we'll be do, doing more farming. Um, one day. 
but this is so cool. Oh, and I just walked into a massive spider's web. Hopefully it didn't get me. If I end up with a big bite on my face, guys, you know what happened. Okay, let me go get um these snips so I can cut these off. Okay, guys, I'm kind of done for the night. I'm getting bit up really bad out here. But so far as tomatoes, these are only the Rama tomatoes. And I have a ton more green ones I'm going to pick to put in bags. But I don't know how many pounds that is. I'll put it out on the table and you guys can guess. But I'm not done. I started with the Ramas. And there's a ton more. And I can tell you, we probably lost half of that out there. Or more. But it's not a loss. Like I said, we're going to use it for the worms and the chickens. So we're going to get plenty out of it.